Mother Hugh McKenzie wakes us up to reality, reality as we experience it, because our own human experience provides for us a true demonstration of the effects of original sin. We all experience this, the pangs of conscience, the struggle to live the good life, an awareness that my own actions have a moral dimension to them. Father Hugh places sin in its true context as a disaster of cosmic significance. I think clearly something has gone wrong. You, you, you look around in the world and you see that humans don't always act in the way our conscience, a true conscience, a formed conscience, the voice of God to us is inviting us to act. We don't always create peace. We, we can see something's gone wrong in the world. And it's quite significant because my own experience is of someone who's called to do good and who gains a sense of well-being and a peace of conscience in being generous. And yet there's also another law in my being, St. Paul calls it, which calls me to be selfish. And that has been like a spanner in the works. The, the first sin we believe happened in the first generation of human beings was like a Hiroshima of the human soul. It was the human mind in the image of God, now free, turning the physical body against the whole pattern in which it was formed through evolution, turning the human body against its natural orientations, which only a human mind could do. And that caused something much worse than a nuclear explosion physically and metaphorically in the spiritual realm. And that means we have to work harder now to do good, and we have to work harder now to think clearly, to, as it were, return to walking with God in the cool of the evening, as Adam and Eve were, we're told in Genesis, before this nuclear explosion happened. Whenever a human being decides to go against the order and patterns of the physical universe written in by billions of years of evolution, I, I would believe, and to go against the nature of the human soul, which is ordered to communion with God and, and with each other. Whenever we sin, whenever we're selfish, it does significantly muck us up. It wounds each other, it breaks the bonds between us, and it turns my being against its law. So there is a sense of feeling cold, a sense of going against God's voice, but it's written into my being. It's going against the very nature of the atoms in my body and the soul in my body. And when Adam and Eve did this, which seems we believe that it happened in the very first generation of human beings, it would have been an even more wounding thing, just as the very human nature, the complementarity of body and soul is being fostered and formed in that first generation. A human being deciding to go against that is really throwing a spanner in the, the clockworks of human nature. So it's created a, a sort of pollution, if you like, and it goes quite deep, but it's still not fundamental because what God has made is good, fundamentally good, and it, it still operates well and rightly. And I think modern science has sort of confirmed this, that modern science has shown that matter is still basically ordered and still basically predictable and still works well. We're aware that there's disorder as well as order, but in the Judeo-Christian tradition, disorder and evil is always secondary to good, to order. And I think modern science has sort of confirmed that by showing that physical things are still basically good and, and ordered, and so is our body. But this harmony between body and soul has been wounded and that's handed on across the generations, which we in our tradition called original sin.